welcome to Just One Day. This channel is dedicated to travel enthusiasts seeking unique and exciting experiences to explore the cities of the world in just 24 hours. Today, we will explore Prague, the city of Gothic towers, picturesque bridges, and a history that spans centuries. We will guide you through an unforgettable adventure along the cobblestone streets of the capital of the Czech Republic. Whether you're here for a short stay or wish to savor its treasures in just one day, Prague will welcome you with open arms. From historical monuments to lively markets, we will take you on a charming tour that captures the magic of this city in every corner. Get ready to immerse yourself in the culture, architecture, and gastronomy of Prague because this is a journey that will stay in your memories forever. Prague is a magical city, one of the most beloved European capitals. It's no wonder that its historic center was added to UNESCO's World Heritage List in 1992. Situated on the Vltava River, it has approximately 1.3 million inhabitants and is the capital of the Czech Republic. With 13 million visitors per year, Prague ranks ninth among the most visited European capitals and is a highly sought-after destination, especially for young people. This city is famous for various aspects such as its very low cost of living, a plethora of pubs and nightlife venues, guaranteed entertainment, and, not to be overlooked, the undisputed beauty of Prague, thanks to the characteristic towers of the old town and the bridges over the Vltava River, making it a fairy tale like place. What is the best time to visit Prague? Prague has a moderately continental climate, meaning it experiences long and cold winters with temperatures dropping below zero, though not by much. Springs and autumns are unpredictable due to the climate gradually moderating towards summer, while summers are mild and pleasantly sunny. Prague sees rainfall throughout the year, with less in summer and more frequently in spring. In winter, precipitation often comes in the form of snow. The best periods to visit Prague are late spring and summer, from May to September. However, for those who enjoy cold weather, snow, and the winter atmosphere in European capitals, the best months are December and January, especially during the Christmas period, when Prague is snowy and festive. When is the most economical time to go to Prague? Initially, we mentioned that Prague has a very low cost of living, making it an affordable city throughout the year. However, in the months of October, November, February, and March, flight and accommodation prices drop even further. This is due to lower tourist influx compared to summer and winter. Seeing Prague in just one day is limited, and you will inevitably have to make some sacrifices. But don't worry. Here are all our tips for Prague in a day. The itinerary includes the main stops, excluding museums and attractions that would take too much time. Start with the must-see in Prague, Stair Mesto, or the Old Town, easily reachable from the central train station. Head to the town hall with the famous astronomical clock, walking along Seletna, one of the city's most famous streets. Conclude the morning by visiting the Yosefov district, the Jewish quarter, and then cross the Charles Bridge. After lunch, skip what you come across on the street, you'll come back to it, and head as quickly as possible to Prague Castle, where you can stroll along its walls and visit St. Vitus Cathedral. Now go back, descend to the Mala Strana district, and don't forget to take a photo in front of the Lenin Wall. If you can stay in the city in the evening, we recommend crossing the Charles Bridge again and returning to the historic center, where you can take part in a unique experience, a medieval dinner in a downtown venue, with live musical entertainment. Okay, let's start. A day in Prague can only begin in Stair Mesto, the historic center of the city. You can easily reach it on foot, from the central station, pass by the large powder tower, which you can admire from the outside, walk along the famous Seletna Street, one of the best known in Prague, and finally reach Starmistsk Nemsti, the oldest square in the historic center. The walk takes about 15 minutes. Once you arrive in the heart of the historic center, in this large and wonderful square, admire the famous astronomical clock of Prague, one of the city's most well-known attractions and one of its symbols. It is located on the southern side of the town hall and consists of three main elements, the astronomical dial, a mechanism that moves at every hour, and a lower dial. We recommend stopping to admire the clock from the outside, perhaps avoiding the hourly spectacle if you don't like crowds, as many people gather below. 
You could also visit it inside, but there isn't much time available. It will definitely be something to do if you have the chance to return to the city. Just one day tip, make a stop at the Church of St. Mary of Tin, on the city skyline, you always see two tall spires, which are the spires of the Church of St. Mary of Tin, accessed from Starmestsk Namesty Square through a gallery. We recommend visiting it especially if the sun is shining, as inside, the large decorated and colorful stained glass windows will create truly unique plays of light. Dedicate the second part of the morning to exploring the Yosefov district, the Jewish quarter of Prague, the former ghetto where the Jewish population lived from 900 to 1708. It is part of the historic center area, so you can easily reach it and explore it on foot. For example, it takes only four minutes from the old town square to the Steranova synagogue, the oldest active synagogue in Europe. The best way to explore this district is to get lost in its streets, letting yourself be carried away by its charm and history. Alternatively, you can also consider a walking tour of the old town and the Jewish quarter to discover the entire historic center with a local guide. Certainly, a must visit is the old Jewish cemetery, an ancient cemetery from the 15th century with approximately 12,000 stone tombstones stacked on top of each other. Some prominent members of the Jewish community are also buried here. In this case as well, we recommend viewing it from the outside because time is limited, but it certainly deserves a more in-depth visit if you return to Prague. Among the illustrious figures who lived in this district is Franz Kafka, a famous writer. Therefore, a statue dedicated to him, inspired by his work description of a battle, could not be missing. It is one of the most photographed spots in the Jewish quarter. Finally, conclude the morning by reaching the famous Charles Bridge, or in the original language, Karlov Most. It is the most famous bridge in the city and one of its symbols, connecting the old town to the Mala Strana district. The bridge was built in 1357 during the reign of Charles IV and today is, without a shadow of a doubt, one of the most important and suggestive monuments in the city. Stretching for an impressive 520 meters, it offers wonderful views of the city and is surrounded by various legends. Along the bridge, you can admire several statues, and at the end of the bridge, on the old town side, you can see a particular stone shaped like a head, hence called the bearded man. This stone was used by the inhabitants to understand variations in the river's water level, thus realizing when it was becoming too high. On the bridge, there are 30 statues of saints which, according to legend, the most famous among all those that hover around the bridge's history, come to life during the night. You should take a stroll here in the evening to admire this place in all its beauty. After a quick lunch, head to one of the undisputed symbols of the city, Prague Castle. Almost always a protagonist in the novels of the writer Kafka, the castle is located on top of a hill, already visible when you cross the Charles Bridge. To reach it, you have two alternatives, either by foot with a 10-15 minute uphill walk, or by tram 12, which stops at Prasky Hrad, behind the castle. Access to the castle walls is completely free, and here you can walk, admiring important buildings from the outside and enjoying the city from above. Since time is short, we recommend visiting St. Vitus Cathedral, one of the largest churches in Europe. Built in 1344 but only completed in 1929, it houses wonderful works inside, in addition to the tomb and the chapel of St. Wenceslas and the tombs of the kings of Bohemia, where the crown jewels are also kept. Just one day's advice, to access the castle area, we recommend walking through Zlata Alika Udalaborki, a very characteristic street in the city. Here you will find 11 low, colorful houses, built to accommodate the 24 guards, with their families, of Emperor Rudolf II of Habsburg. Later, it was inhabited by various goldsmiths, hence the name Golden Lane. But not only that, according to legend, alchemists also lived here who, on behalf of Rudolf, tried to reproduce the Philosopher's Stone, hence the name Alchemist's Alley. In short, a place to discover and photograph. Once you've visited St. Vitus Cathedral and enjoyed the panoramic view from the castle, make your way back down the hill to reach the district of Marla Strana, one of Prague's most famous neighborhoods. Again, you have two options, either walk downhill, taking in the wonderful views along the way in just 10 minutes, or take tram line 22 and get off at Malostransk Namesty. 
Malastrana is almost like a city of its own, very distinctive, and centered around Malostransk Namesty, the main square of the neighborhood. If you walked down from the castle, you likely traversed a stretch of Neridova Street, one of the most elegant streets in all of Prague. However, the real attraction of the district is the Lenin Wall, or Leninova Z. It's a wall that, since the time of the communist regime, has always been covered in graffiti and often political messages. Today, it is almost entirely covered in murals inspired mainly by Beatles songs, hence the name. Due to time constraints, we focused on exploring the old town, but Prague also features a new town, Nova Mesto, radiating around Wenceslas Square. Here, you'll find the famous dancing house, as well as the wonderful National Museum of Prague, with various exhibitions on natural sciences and history, suitable even for children. We recommend dedicating half a day to explore this part of the city. If you love art and history, note that the castle ticket includes various attractions beyond St. Vitus Cathedral, the Old Royal Palace, the Prague Castle History Exhibition, St. George's Basilica, Rosenberg Palace, and the Prague Castle Picture Gallery. Obviously, it's impossible to see everything in one day, so you can choose one of the various exhibition routes available. For family travelers, a panoramic cruise on the Vltava River is a must, as well as spending some time at Letna Park, offering a wonderful panoramic view of the city. Useful tips How to get around in Prague Prague, despite being a capital city, is a perfect destination to explore on foot. For a first approach, we recommend participating in a walking tour with a local guide. Alternatively, the historic center is perfect for discovering on a bike. You can do this through guided bike tours or independently using the bike sharing service. If you need to use public transportation, the best option is the metro, especially the green line that crosses the main neighborhoods of Prague. Buses and trams are punctual and efficient, but you will likely use them very little. All three modes of transportation can be used with the same ticket. Alternatively, we recommend the tourist bus, ideal for taking a panoramic tour of the city and getting oriented. Where to stay in Prague? Malastrana and Prague Castle are undoubtedly the most convenient areas in terms of tourism, but they are also the most expensive and inconvenient for parking. The same neighborhoods are recommended for families with children since they are quite calm in the evenings. Young people and nightlife enthusiasts can definitely enjoy themselves in Nove Mesto and Wenceslas Square, which are full of bars and nightclubs. Those who prefer to experience a less touristy Prague, in direct contact with the locals, should opt for residential areas such as Zizkov and Vina Haradi, a bit further from the center but certainly more affordable. Areas to avoid, the city is quite safe, and there are no genuinely dangerous neighborhoods. Like in all major cities, one should be cautious in crowded public places. Avoid the areas near the central station, such as the nearby park, often referred to as Sherwood by locals, like Robin Hood stealing from the rich. From a tourist perspective, it's advisable to steer clear of overly peripheral neighborhoods as they lack attractions and points of interest. 10 Things to Eat in Prague When visiting a city abroad, the traveler's curiosity is drawn to various things, the history of the country and the metropolis, the lifestyle of the citizens, important monuments, and cultural traditions, and food. It is well known that to taste the true typical dishes of another nation, it is necessary to go there directly, making the journey truly complete. That's why we decided to dedicate this article to those planning to go to Prague and, in addition to exploring the city and discovering its beauties, also want to sit at the table of a typical restaurant or discover the most delicious street food that the capital of the Czech Republic has to offer. Follow us in discovering the 10 things to absolutely eat in Prague. Goulash a dish that can also be found in neighboring Hungary, but the Prague version is not as spicy. It is a beef stew or stew with a mix of vegetables and dumplings. Versions with chicken or deer meat, or even vegetarian, can also be found. Sukova na smetane. It is a dish consisting of roast beef tenderloin served with sweet and sour cream sauce and cranberries. Despite being a slightly more refined dish compared to the city's standards, and therefore a bit more expensive, it remains an affordable typical Czech dish. The pairing with a strong dark beer is a winner. Gfrontlozolo 
One of the truly must-try dishes not only for Prague but for the entire Czech cuisine is this dish made of roasted pork with dumplings and sauerkraut. A real brick suitable for strong stomachs. Of course, to lighten up, it is recommended to accompany it with a fresh beer. Trudelnik A traditional dessert consisting of a sweet pastry roll usually served warm and enriched with sugar, hazelnut granules, and cinnamon. It is normal to see it being prepared in stalls scattered throughout the city, the dessert is, in fact, part of that street food tradition to be tasted, especially during the winter. Schlebeke A tasty snack, a mini sandwich consumed for breakfast or a quick lunch. It is usually served at parties or events that gather more people, filled with eggs, cold cuts, and pickles. Smazny Sear These are fried cheese balls served with fries or salad, truly delicious and appreciated by cheese lovers. They are sold everywhere on the streets of Prague and are ideal for a tasty snack or a quick meal. Ned Likey A traditional side dish is these dumplings served as an accompaniment to meat dishes or other main courses, such as goulash. They are the equivalent of our dumplings, although in Prague there is also a sweet version served as a dessert, with a fruit or jam filling. Brambarova Pelevka It is a traditional hearty potato soup, ideal during cold winter days. It also contains other vegetables such as carrots, celery, and mushrooms and is further flavored with a pinch of garlic and oregano. Says Nikova Pelevka It is a dish for the more adventurous, who, after eating it, do not have romantic appointments. It is indeed a garlic-based soup in which small pieces of rye bread and diced potatoes are immersed. Flavored with marjoram, freshly ground black pepper, and chopped parsley, the dish proves to be simple but delicious and also healthy. Colino. Meat, meat, and more meat. This typical Czech dish is also meat-based, consisting of an entire pork knuckle marinated in dark beer mixed with aromatic herbs. The result is crispy on the outside, tender and juicy on the inside. The cooking process, in fact, makes the meat so tender that it can easily detach from the bone. Of course, the process is very long, about 45 minutes, which you can spend tasting some local beers. And so concludes our day in Prague. I hope this virtual journey has inspired you to explore this incredible city. Prague is a destination that blends history, culture, and beauty in a unique way. If you have the opportunity, allow yourself more time to discover additional hidden treasures. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and always remember to let yourself be carried away by the magic of Prague. Goodbye from just one day to the next trip.